Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Full Metal Geek. I'm your host for today, Robert the Hobbit Parker, and with me is Coho the co-host. Actually, should I restart that? Because now it just started counting now. I'm going to restart that. We're going to cut that out and redo that part. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is... Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Full Metal Geek. I'm your host today, Robert Parker, and with me as sometimes, I can't say as usual and I can't say as never, with me as sometimes is Coho, the co-host. How are you doing this evening, Kill Coho? Uh, I am doing good. This is going to be a fun matchup to see. We know uh, we know both these guys know their stuff in Geek. It's going to be a good match. Absolutely, yeah. We are in the second round of the Full Metal Geek Tournament, so the winner of this match will go on to the semis. This is the third second round match that we're posting, so I'm super excited to see uh, at the end of this what the reaction is for the winner of this match to find out who they play, because we already recorded that match. Uh, but uh, our match today is actually between Jeremy Adams, uh, who is coming in 3-3 three and three with three TKOs. Uh, against Thomas Scully, the rookie, the 16 seed, uh, sitting at 2 0, who upset the number one seed. So let's see what they have to say here at the start. First, with the rookie coming in the 16 seed, Thomas, uh, and his manager, Brooklyn. How are you guys feeling about today's match? Uh, Brooklyn, go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm a little scared, uh, to be honest with you. Jeremy has had the new British Empire's number in singles uh, with recently uh, defending the title against Kill, uh, Kill Bowman. Uh, but I think the real question today, will Nico be laying down on his coach during the match or will he actually be sitting up? Uh, that's very effective as to whether or not he actually uh, helps Jeremy. Which, but Jeremy doesn't really need help anyways. He's sort of he's, he's a goat. He's a pioneer of the community. Uh, but Thomas, uh, he pulled off the upset last time, uh, and this, it's, we're just going to keep this train rolling. The Empire's got to rise, and uh, we unfortunately have to break Jeremy's streak of uh, of beating the new British Empire. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I've been wanting to play Jeremy for a while now. He's, he's the goat wherever you go in the fan leagues, whether it's uh, singles, whether it's geek, whether it's teams wherever he's he's the best so i'm excited that i finally get a chance to play him um but i want i i, I, I want a shot at that title so if, if i got to go through jeremy uh to get to the next round so be it so i'm ready let's do this all right and best of luck to you and the eighth seed of this tournament coming in jeremy dad adams and his manager nico how are you guys feeling about today's match and your opponent the 16 seed thomas Gill. I'm tempted to do this interview upside down just to mess with Brooklyn, but I won't <laughs> because that would be ridiculously complicated to do, uh, and we only have so much time to do this. Uh, you guys have heard me do the spiel before. I hype up Jeremy and all of his insert number of belts here. Uh, he undercuts himself because this is geek, and I yell at him to have confidence in himself because he is <laughs> that good, and he's proven it time and time again. And we're going to show that again here today. And if we lose, then that just means we lost to a great competitor in Thomas Scully because I won't deny that Thomas Scully is really good in the geek realm. But Jeremy is just an overall great movie mind. And that's why he's been so good in geek uh, as he has. And Jeremy, the floor is yours. What are you feeling? How are you thinking? Uh, what are we going to do tonight? Well, I was, I was psyching myself up to come here and say a lot of negative things about my opponent because I found out he hates a certain movie that I love. But you know what? He had some really respectful words for me at the top, and that means a lot to me. Anytime that I play somebody that, that has respect and uh, that kind of uh, that great attitude, I, I can't get mad at that. Uh, this guy I've been watching, you know, in the short time that he's been around, both here and in the Multiplex League, I've been watching him, and this kid is great, especially in this field. So... Uh, I really don't think he has any weaknesses, so I'm just going to have to be play my best game, uh, hope the questions fall in my favor, do the absolute best that I can, and I just uh, I have great respect for Thomas, and I think it, it elevates the game anyway, anytime two really uh, talented players can play, so I'm excited. But just, I have to do it. Uh, for luck, I have this guy Gizmo from the great film uh, Gremlins keeping it, giving me some luck tonight, so that, that's the only thing I'll say. Yes, don't right. feed it after midnight. Yeah, yep. and uh, arguably Gizmo a better manager than Nico. Interesting. Uh, oh, that one. But we're going to hop right into the match. Uh, of course, I'm going to try to speed through these round one, but I'm a little bit under the weather, so uh, we'll see if we can make it happen. Round one looks like this: you're going to get ten questions from ten predetermined geek categories. You've got about fifteen seconds to write down the answer. Once we uh, fifteen seconds are up, we're going to call on you. You're going to reveal and say the answer at the same time. If you get it right, you get a point. Uh, and if you get all ten correct, you will have a bonus question worth additional one point. Should you get that right, three repeats and shot. 
challenges that across the match. <sighs> okay. And that's it. 20, 23 seconds. A little okay. under time. But I've, gotten, <laughs> I've gotten 19 before. 19 is my quickest. Um, let's talk down on RJ. Okay. But now that we've all heard, uh, he thinks he can outdo me in that in the speed, and he's wrong. Uh, so we will hop right into question one, which comes to you all in the category of Middle Earth. In Two Towers, Gollum swears to serve Frodo. What does he swear on? Uh, one might say that Brooklyn would swear on a gremlin, uh, or one would swear on a gremlin, that they are better at managing than Nico. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that might have been said 30 seconds ago that I capitalized on. It was low-hanging fruit. I had to take it. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Coming to Jeremy first, actually. I believe he says the precious. That is correct. And Thomas? Swears on the precious. Yep. Awesome. Nice job, guys. Dunked on. All right. Your second question is in the category of Star Wars. What do Luke and Ben sell at most Eisley to be able to pay Han in A New Hope? Question starting to get a little bit tougher because we're in round two of the tournament. Uh, these are no longer your run-of-the-mill questions. No longer the data scum questions uh, that I thrive on. Cool. Three. I was going to say it, but you beat me to it. Two, one. Ben's down. Coming to Thomas. Levy sells uh, Luke's speeder. And Jeremy? No, I said C3 pin RTG2. Uh, we were looking for the speeder. Thomas is yeah. correct and goes at one point. All right, your next one is in the category of Star Trek. What species of alien does Zephram Cochran make first contact with in Star Trek First Contact? This movie uh, is dope, as the old kids say. Uh, I will always remember the day I made first contact with Brooklyn, and it kind of kind of scared me a little bit. Not gonna lie, I uh, <laughs> a little bit of a little bit of the three, two contact high. If you will. What uh, possibly could you be insinuating? Pens down, and we are coming to Jeremy. The Vulcans and Thomas. The Vulcans. Nice job, Thomas. Still perfect. <laughs> All right, guys, your next question comes to the category of directors and composers, a.k.a. Caleb's data scum favorite questions. How many installments in the Harry Potter franchise did John Williams compose the score for? Not only is it a uh, directors and composers question, it's a composer it's question. It's also a numbers question. It is also even a numbers question. Ask, um, five, it's just four, mm, three, two, one. Just to get all. Down, and Thomas. Gives uh, me three. And Jeremy? Three. It was three, the first three. Thomas keeping that one-point lead and keeping that perfect round as well. Next one in the category of Wizarding World. Who plays Credence Barebone in the Fantastic Beasts movies? Another data question for me to throw right on. I'm just feeding it. If you it gives only, me power. It keeps me young. If only you were playing this match. I know, just dunks <laughs> everywhere. Five. Four, Dunking on a six-inch rim. Two. One. Hands down, uh, Jeremy. Yeah, Jeremy. Ezra, Ezra Miller. And Thomas? Better than his character in Justice League, Ezra Miller. Hot <laughs> takes over here. Uh, Ooh. Won't judge you for Ooh. this, though. Ooh. All right. Your sixth question comes to the category of mixed bag. It could be anything. In Wanted, who plays Fox, the female assassin who helps bring Wesley into the fraternity? A lot of words to speak in a very precise order. Yeah, I, the, yeah. There, well, it's almost like it matters how the question's worded. Five, uh, 100%. four, three, two, one. Uh, pens down. And Thomas, again. Angelina Jolie. And Jeremy. Angelina Jolie. Wow, these guys are not batting an eye. Thomas still up. As Toy the match far. so far. Very close. The next one's in the category of Marvel. In 2005... Marvel released two films, the first Fantastic Four, and what other movie? This one, five, just Thomas has his thinking it. face on. It's an A year in terms of movies, right? That's why I was like, hey, okay. Sure, whatever you say, bud. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, I mean, one. Revenge five. of the Sith? Like, come on. <laughs> I, you said it was great the other day. Jeremy, what you have? I love it. El Electra. And Thomas? Visual diarrhea, Electra. That is the most apt description <laughs> of that I've ever heard. 
Correct on both accounts. Wow. All right. Your eighth question comes in the category of Worlds of DC. Which member of the Justice League attacked Superman first after he was brought back to life? Scully's still batting perfect with only a few to go. As I said earlier, toy match, as Andy said. Toy match. Five, toy four, three, two, one. Hands down, coming to Thomas first. I believe it was Cyborg due to his mechanical stuff or something like that. And Jeremy? Cyborg. Oh, correct. All right. Your Ooh. penultimate question is in the category of MCU. Whose grave do Steve, Sam, and Fury gather around at the end of the Winter Soldier? I have a feeling that um, Brooklyn is, uh, is looking to dig mine after this match. I don't think he's very happy with my comment from early. He is not happy even a little bit with that. Five, yep. four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. Uh, Jeremy, we're coming to you first. Peggy Carter? That is incorrect. Thomas. If someone asks where they can find me, tell them right here. Nick Fury's. Oh, it man. is Fury's grave. Damn. That is correct. So obvious. Nine points. Wow. All right. And your last question of the round comes to the category of DC. Which DC hero's father was killed in an aircraft accident, a fate which haunts the hero? If Thomas hits this, he will get a perfect round one, and we'll be awarded the bonus question. If he misses, then I jinxed it. Uh, did you jinx him? We will find out. Five, four, three, two, one. Thomas, we're coming to you first. What you have? I believe it's Hal Jordan slash Green Lantern. And Jeremy? Green Lantern. That is correct. Eight perfect to round. ten at the end of round one. Thomas does get a perfect round. So I will ask you your bonus question. You don't need to write this down. I'll just ask it to you, and you can uh, go for it. Wow. So your question is in the category of quotes. Which Marvel character said, all I ever wanted was to travel off in exotic places and meet new exciting people and then kill them, so I became a mercenary? Uh, Deadpool. That is correct. <laughs> In X-Men wow. Origins. Okay. That Oof. is correct. Wow. 11. Wow. 11. Jeremy still an absolutely stunning round with still eight. Thomas just happened to go perfect so far. Uh, so we're going to hop right into Terrifying. round two. Yeah, this match is insane. We're going to hop into round two. It's going to work like this. I'm going to bring up a wheel. It's going to have eight randomized categories plus heroes and villains pick, which is spinners and opponent's choice. The person in the lead in this case, Thomas, is going to choose after I read the categories whether they'd like to spin first or second. Then, uh, stop counting, Caleb. You got in my head. Uh, then, uh, where was I? Gets uh, first or second. Uh, then whoever's up with the wheel gets a chance to spin. If they don't like the category the second or first time, they do get a chance to race. Remember, they're just the second option, first one's not to their liking. Then you get five questions for two points apiece. You can devalue the question down with you know, one point uh, by checking the multiple choice. And of course, there is stealing this round. So trapping, yeah. oh, so trapping the six second stumble, you were at 19. So I saw, I saw you. Oh, God, that got my head. <laughs> I'm going to do it again. The third round's more complicated. But. Um, <laughs> You all understood what I meant. It's the normal round not two. Even, I'm not even sorry. It's the normal round two. So uh, I'm going to bring in Thomas's manager and then show you guys the wheel, and then uh, you all will be able to choose if you'd like to go first or second. Uh, uh, who is the true rap god, Eminem or Robert Parker? We will uh, find not out. me. All right, so uh, sponsored by Office Depot and Office Max. Uh, this wheel has the categories of directors, composers, Wizarding World, Star Trek, DC, Marvel, Heroes and Villains, Middle Earth, and Worlds of DC. After hearing that, uh, Brooklyn, would you like to go first or second with comments? my my co my colleague? I would advise my colleague to go first. I, I think I think that's I think that's the wiser choice. I I I agree. It's worked for me in the past, so. Uh... Let's hope it stays that way. We're in a spin first. Okay. Your first spin is in. Interesting. Last time. Um, Wizarding World. Oh. Uh, yeah. I, I, I would like that, Brooklyn. How do you feel about that? I feel pretty, pretty, pretty good about that. So, yeah. All right. Let's do it then. 
All right, so uh, I will read Thomas's questions in the category of Wizarding World because I don't trust Caleb to say these right. That is completely fair. Low blow, but it's true. <laughs> All right. It's uh, here we go, Thomas. Uh, two points piece, and remember there's multiple choice, and Jeremy, there is stealing. All right, your first question. Who summons the fiend fire in the Room of Requirement in Deathly Hallows Part 2? Uh, that'll be Vincent Crabb. That is incorrect. Chance for a two-point steal from Jeremy. Oh. oh. Goyle? That is correct for a two-point steal. Damn it. In the book, it is Crabb. In the movie, it is Goyle. Okay. I wonder yep. what happened to Crabb. Uh, cocaine charges is what yep. happened to Crab. <laughs> yep. Yes, it did. All right. So that is a massive two points still for Jeremy. 10 to 11. Uh, Thomas, your second question. What jinx does Hermione use to send birds after Ron in Half-Blood Prince? A pug no. That is correct for two points. Had a little stumble there, but Hops right back on with the big two points. Your next one. Who voices the spider Aragog in Chamber of Secrets? Oh, shit. Oh. Multiple choice. Is it A, Julian Glover, B, Denholm Elliott, C, Warwick Davis, or D, Kenneth Branagh? A. A is correct for one point. All right, your next one. Besides the broomstick, what else was in the package given to Harry at the end of Prisoner of Azkaban? Um, it was a, a feather. That is correct for two points. And your final question. What animal was Hermione's Patronus in Order of the Phoenix? Hermione's Patronus was an otter. That is correct for another big two points. Hefty, hefty score. That is up to 18 at the end of Thomas's round two. But that was a really big two-point steal. If Jeremy has a solid round, he can still he can tie this up. He could take the lead. Uh, all is to play for still in this match. That two-point steal was essential for Jeremy. Absolutely. There. So uh, I will bring up Nico, and I will bring up the wheel again, and we'll get to right. Jeremy's. Okay. Your spin, Jeremy's in, and it lands on heroes and villains. I, I would prefer you take something that you can definitely run the table with, but we also know I that... See, that I see... How, you feel, how, how do you feel about the other categories on the wheel? I see, like, three that I like more, but then I see a couple that are going to destroy me. So, I guess... Um, I guess go for it. Respin. Yeah, I... I yeah, I... I I'm we'll respin. Re yeah, respin. All right, can I respin? This time it lands on Wizarding World. That's a free respin because I don't know if I have more questions ready. It lands on Marvel. Okay. We'll work with that. Outside the MC. You got this, buddy. All right. All right. Caleb, Alrighty. Your round two questions in the category of Marvel. Your first question. Which Marvel film features a cast including B.J. Novak, Martin Sakas, and Felicity Jones. I believe it's Martin Kasakis. You might be right. Martin Kasakis, thank you. That's a scary last name for me to try and read. A lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of letters. I'm gonna go multiple choice to be safe. All right, your multiple choice options are A, The Amazing Spider-Man Two, B, Men in Black Three, C, Kick Ass Two, or D, Punisher War Zone. Amazing Spider-Man 2. That is correct for one point. Good movie. All right, your second question in the category yeah. Marvel. At the start of 2003's Hulk, Bruce and his co-workers test nanomeds on what living organism before accidentally killing it? Yeah. Multiple choice. Your options are A, rats, B, frogs, C, rabbits, or D, dogs. Right. Feel that groove. Frogs. That is correct for one point. Nice job. Your third question in the category Marvel. 
Throughout the Wolverine, Logan is haunted by false visions of whom? Um, Jean Grey. That's correct for two points. Two points there. Your your penultimate question in the category of Marvel. Penultimate, you mother. Penultimate. <laughs> They're just what doing New it York, on They are. What New York City neighborhood is Kingpin's Collider located under in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse? Let's go multiple choice. Be safe. Your options are A, Staten Island. B, the Bronx, C, Brooklyn, or D, Manhattan? Staten Island. That is incorrect. Scully with the chance for one-point steal. It's Brooklyn. That is correct for the one-point steal. And, Jeremy, your last question in Marvel. What actor appears in both Ghost Rider and Blade? Donald Logue. That is correct right. for two yeah, That's points. a great pull. That's a great pull. All right. Big two uh, points. At the end of Jeremy's round two, Jeremy is only down three points. Uh, it is the same deficit at the end of round one. 19 to Jeremy's 16. So that was a pretty solid round two by both players. Both players getting a pretty big steal. Uh, and we will now go into round three, which works like this. I'm going to bring up a new wheel, this one with only six randomized categories. You're going to get a two, three, and five-pointer. The categories from which those questions will come will be determined by that wheel spin. You do have one respin to use throughout the entirety of round three, so make sure you use it wisely. And we'll stick with the person who is behind until they take the lead, and then we'll switch back to the other person. Um, did I forget anything? I don't think so. Uh, you still have all three. Everybody still has all three of the repeats. Um, oh, and the same category can be used multiple times as long as it's for different point values. That's it. Okay. So, uh, Jeremy, you are three points behind, so we're going to go for two for your two point spin first. Yeah. And your categories in this round are Marvel, MCU, Heroes and Villains, Star Wars, Star Trek, and Directors Composers. Okay. And this wheel is sponsored by Crate and Kids. Jeremy, your two points uh, is in. You are the crate. You are the crate, and I am the kid. The two pointer is in Marvel. I think we'll. I think we'll take it, Nico. Yeah, it's two points. Go for it. All right. Uh, I will read Jeremy his question in the category of Marvel for two points. I need to scroll down. Okay. Which X Men film opens with a scene inside a pyramid in ancient Egypt? Uh, X Men Apocalypse. That is correct for two points. Brings the deficit to only one point. So you go to Jeremy now for your three point spin. And your three point spin is in. And it lands on Star Wars. This favors I mean, I think, me more than more than it does you, but what are you feeling I, on this? I, I think I gotta save that respin for the five pointer. Because I know uh, I'm gonna have to answer it one way or the other. Yeah, I, I would save the respin right. for when we need it the most. All right, we'll take Star Wars. Okay, a three pointer and Star Wars. Here we go. In Attack of the Clones, name both witnesses of Anakin and Padme's marriage. Ah, this is probably wrong. C-3PO and R2-D2? That is correct for three points. <laughs> it, it was incorrect in round one, correct in round three. Comes back from this round. He takes the lead with that question for the first time in the match. 21 to Thomas' 19. Thomas, we're going to go to you for your two. Hitting this will tie the game for you, Thomas. Your two-point spin is... In and remember that uh, the Marvel two pointer is off the board. I say that because it landed on Marvel, so we're gonna have to give it the respin. And it lands on Star Trek. Just do Star Trek for your two. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna want to keep that. Okay. Uh, Thomas. Uh, 
Koho will ask you your two-point question in Star Trek. Yes, I will. Thank you. All right, your two-point question is Star Trek, Thomas. In what U.S. city is Starfleet headquarters located in Star Trek, the motion picture? Uh, San Francisco. That is correct for one point. For two points. That is correct for two, two points. points. Uh, and that will tie the games. It's now 21 to 21. So, Thomas, we are actually sticking with you because you have not technically retaken the lead. So we're going stick- to stick with you for your three-pointer. I can't math. It's very apparent. It is, unfortunately, extremely clear. It's unfortunately uh, very glaring that my biggest weakness is math. Thomas, your three-pointer landed on MCU. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. All right. Your three-point question in the MCU. Name two of the tribes of Wakanda in Black Panther. Um, The... River Tribe and the Mountain Tribe. Uh, that is incorrect. That is incorrect. Uh, we are looking for river, mining, merchant, border, or Jabari. You were okay. thinking of Jabari is for the mountain one, but it is not the mountain. So uh, that was incorrect. We have to stick with Thomas for his right. five pointer. Okay. Thomas, about five pointer. You do still have your respin left. Gary Miss. <coughs> Excuse me. Your five point spin lands on Marvel. What do you think, Brooklyn? Uh, let's see. Darkest Composer, Star Wars, Star Trek. Uh, what's it? Oh, was it a. Was oh, it a category, world? Sorry, the categories are Marvel, MCU, Heroes and Villains, Star Wars, Star Trek, and Darkest Composers. It's not awful, but. I'm just like, because I imagine heroes and villains is probably going to be a dickish question. Director's yeah. is probably not going to be nice. I'd say we probably have to eat it and just take it. Yeah. All right. Let, let's keep Marvel. Okay. All right. So your five point question in Marvel. Name one of Poppy's two robotic dogs from Kingsman: The Golden Circle. Uh, Benny. That is correct for that five. Is correct points. for it's, five it's, points. It's, it's Benny and Jet because of the Elton John song. <laughs> that is correct. For five that points brings true. it up to twenty-six. So we're gonna head back now that uh, Thomas has retaken the lead. We have to head back to Jeremy for Jeremy's five-pointer. Uh, if he hits it, we will go into sudden death. If he misses, uh, we will have Thomas moving into the semifinals. This is an extremely close match, and I will live for it. All right, Jeremy, your five pointers, and and it lands on directors and composers. We're keeping that, aren't we? We'll we'll take it. <laughs> uh, okay, and I'll read you the uh, composers' question for five points. Okay, what MCU director helmed the 2011's film? Oh, excuse me, that's not supposed to say. Okay, right, let me start. What MCU director helmed the 2011 film titled Super, starring Rain Wilson, Ellen Page, and more? James Gunn. That is correct for five points and a tie game. <sighs> sudden death we go. Sudden death. Caleb, you are very familiar with this. Would you like to explain the rules? Just kidding, I will. Uh, oh, so- well, that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> um, the way uh, that we do... Excuse me, the way that we do sudden death is we bring the same round three wheel back up and we spin it again. Uh, and we basically start using up five pointers that we haven't used, and we start using up three pointers that we haven't used, and we start using up two pointers that we haven't used, basically. And it's back to the whiteboard. So the first person to hit when their opponent misses will win the game. That's how it works. So we're not adding any points if you both get it right. We're not taking away any points. It's even the person who gets it right when the other person misses, we're not adding points. Uh, it's just the first person to hit when the other person misses. And we're just using up uh, five pointers. All your respins are gone. Uh, we're just using up. Basically, we're starting over with this these round three categories. So let me bring this wheel up. So we have used the Marvel and the director's composers uh, five pointers. So we're gonna see. We have. And this one lands on MCU. So we will use that question. 
Uh, same as rules as normal. You got 15 seconds to answer. You both have all of your repeats. So yeah, that's how that works. Here we go. Your five, or excuse me, your sudden death question in the category of MCU. In Captain America: The First Avenger, what kind of establishment is the Super Soldier Procedure Room hidden inside? This is tense. Very tense. This is a v incredible match. This could be the finals match. This could be. The score is twenty six to twenty six. I don't know what the record is here, but that is has to be twenty six. Is the three point or is the three on record? Three, two. Someone's about to break it tonight. Then uh, pens down, please. We're going to go to Jeremy first. I set a bar. And Thomas is in an antique store. And your winner. Moving on to round three, it is Thomas. Oh, <gasps> the antique score was the correct answer. Twenty final seven. Seven to twenty-six. Uh, breaking the three-round points record. That is exactly what you want in these kind of tournament matches. These two heavyweights. These guys both played great, Caleb. Uh, I'm a little bit speechless, but we're going to go to people who are never speechless, and that is managers. Uh, we're sure. going to go first to Nico and Jeremy here. Uh, you guys played an excellent game. Eight in round one, a massive two-point steal in round two, and a perfect three for three in that final round, Jeremy. You got to be feeling good about where you're at right now. Yeah, I, I don't feel bad at all. I'm, I am just about sure this is my best performance ever in a geek match. So, I mean, losing is never fun. Like, it never feels good to lose, but, you know, the second... The second thing after winning or losing is how well did I play? And this is the best I've ever played. So it just so happens, like I said, this kid Thomas is, I think he's going to go all the way. I think he's going to end up probably with some titles in the geek realm of things. And the fact that I took him all the way to sudden death, uh, you know, all the way there, both, you know, scoring high. Did, was 26 the record, did you say? Or was 26 it? was the three-point record. It was tied between Case and Jay. Yeah, and so to tie, to tie yeah, the you record. You tied it as well. You tied the record. To tie the record in a loss, I, you know, that's, that's about insane. the best. That's about the best you could ever do and not win. So I, I can definitely live with that. By um, far the and, highest scoring loss we've ever had in this league. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's probably the highest score lo highest scoring loss I've ever had in anything. So, and one of the highest scoring matches I've ever had in anything. So I, I really can't feel bad. And uh, I don't know what you think about this, Nico, but you know, I, I feel fine. I, I, I'm looking forward to when the tournament is over and I can get back to playing, get back to a positive uh, winning record. But until then I, I feel pretty good. Um, yeah, I, I feel pretty good about this too. Like imagine if this was a glass and it had actual water in it right now, we'd be <laughs> looking at it half full because yeah. my, my, this was a damn impressive uh, performance by both competitors, uh, entertaining, just watching it backstage as a fan, let alone as a manager. Um, and yeah, Jeremy will be back uh, in geek, um, when the tournament's over and he will be as strong as he was here tonight. I can promise you that. But I can also promise you that he's still got two titles over his shoulders and he's going to successfully yeah. defend that full metal singles title at the snowball at the end of this year. Uh, he's going to show why he's the best at movie war zone um, at uh, multiplexes of uh, end of the year event. Uh, so we're, uh, uh, we're, we're, we're going to stay positive. We're going to keep with the smiles on our faces and uh, yeah. Congratulations to Thomas. You played a fantastic game. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Jeremy, you are you by far have the highest stats by far of anybody with an a losing record. You're three <laughs> and four now, but your points per game and your accuracy is stellar. Thank so you. uh we we will see you very soon uh post tournament. Post Thank you very much next season. Uh and, you made it fantastic today. And one more time, I just have to say how uh much respect I have for Thomas. That you know, that was an incredible performance and um Absolutely nothing negative to say about such an incredible player. Um, to have that much geek knowledge uh, is is staggering. So much love to him, and and uh, good luck in the rest of the tournament. With that said, Brooklyn, where's our sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we are now going over to the winner, who the rookie three zero who has broken the points record, uh, beating Jeremy in sudden death. Thomas Brooklyn, take it away. How are you feeling? Brooklyn, go. I, the go. empire is on the rise. The train 
will keep on chugging. I was getting ready to write to, to write something down saying that we had an, sorry that Thomas had an eighty two percent accuracy and was and was and lost, but uh to the to the much to the delight of myself, Thomas proved me wrong and binked that sudden death pointer to break the single to break the single match points record. Um this is the level of competition that we're expect that we're expecting moving forward. I a round of applause, I believe, or uh, a metaphorical round of applause to Jeremy uh, for tying the record and yet and yet some somehow losing. Uh, this was a back and forth. I was a scared mother uh, go, uh, going in going into sudden death. But you know what? Uh, Thomas proved why he is the prospect of, of IG of, of fandom of, of the nerd of the nerd realm of this fan of this fan community. Um, and his stock is only going to rise, much like the new British Empire. Uh, very proud mother slash manager. I, I have several things to say. First off, Jeremy, I I have no words. I mean, 26 points and you I <laughs> I have no words. Um you took advantage of my slip up there in Wizarding World, which never happens. Um that was phenomenal. Uh you were able to bank all three of your third rounders. That was amazing. You're probably hands down the best competitor I've ever faced in Geek, hands down. Um and to be able to go up against you in any sort of uh, division, category, whatever, it's an honor. So much respect to you. I know you're going to be back, and I know you're going to be hunting for a title. Um, as for me, I finally got my, my perfect round. I've been hunting for that for a, a little bit now. Um, I do – I there were a couple instances where I answered way too quickly. Uh, Crab, I, I knew it was Goyle. I, I, had the, I had Ron saying, Goyle set the bloody place on fire in my head. I still say Crab. Um, we'll slip up. And then the three pointer, I, I knew Drabari tribe. I said mountain tribe for some odd reason. Um, but yeah, I need to slow down a little bit. I was a little, uh, I had a lot of adrenaline in my system. I think when, uh, when Jeremy was hitting those round three questions, um, and that's just me being in my own head a little bit. Um, but thankfully I watched Kingsman two a few times over the summer. So I know that movie pretty well. And Benny and Jed are small details, but distinct enough to remember in MCU that's been my bread and butter second only to Wizarding World for a while now so if it had to end on any question I am glad it ended on an, uh, on an MCU one yeah absolutely uh yeah you played fantastic that perfect round one is killer I believe you're like probably the third or fourth person full metal geek ever to do it uh so that's an incredible achievement and yeah you, you played an excellent game today and now you're moving on to the semifinals of this tournament, and hopefully, this isn't a spoiler, uh, depending on how the uh, upload schedule works, but in the next round, you will be playing Renee Villarreal Jr., my partner in Full Metal Geek. Wow. RJ, not my team partner, but my partner in crime as far as running the league. Uh, RJ, who is coming in, he came into the tournament at the five seed. Uh, you've upset in every match you've been in, but how do you feel about taking on RJ in the next round? <laughs> Uh, look, I love RJ. Um, he had a lot of faith in me uh, during the bracket breakdown, said I was going to go to the uh, semifinals, and, well, here I am playing him, of course. Um, uh, he's, he's always said that, uh, well, uh, just give me, like, five minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've all, RJ I've, had well, to come in and, like, he wanted to interrupt the promo. But, exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's, you know, uh, he's always said that, that uh, anyone who beats him is, like, I either like uh, above or well, I, I shouldn't say above the world part because that's like the, the the total opposite. But they're like below par for the course as far as this division goes. He calls um, himself the bar of the division. Yeah, he calls himself the bar of the that. division. So um, I'm excited to play him. I know he had, he he had to go through Nazario and Sandy as well in order to get here. So he he must be on a hot streak too. So I I I can't wait to see him in the semis. I hope it's a good match, but. I want that title shot. I want to face you, Robert. That's That's been my calling since day one. I feel it in my bones, especially after this match. But I hope Renee and I have a great match. So let's do it. Let's bring it on. All right. Well, uh, I hope to see you in the finals of, or uh, post the tournament, of course. But I'm very much looking forward to your semifinal match against RJ. Uh, and now I'm going to do a quick sign off. So, Caleb, thank you very much for being co the co-host. I'm very appreciative of your time, as always. Uh, from everybody here at Full Metal Geek, do all that stuff you're supposed to do at the end of a YouTube video. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you both for our competitors who played arguably one of the best Full Metal Geek matches we've ever played. Maybe the, maybe the best. Yeah. Maybe yeah. the best. Maybe the best. 
uh, Thomas and Jeremy, you guys freaking killed it. Uh, the manager is Nico in Brooklyn. Uh, and from everybody here at the Full Metal team, thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you next week as we post our final match of round two. And then it's on to the semis. See you soon.